Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the medical black book. Our today's topic is gallbladder. It is a pear-shaped organ which is present in the right hypochondrium just below the visceral surface of the liver. It is present in the right lobe of the liver between the right lobe and the quadrant lobe of the liver. For a further understanding, we will see it in a diagrammatic picture. This is the diagrammatic presentation of the liver. As you can see, the liver has a left lobe, a right lobe, which is divided due to a ligament called spelsiform ligament. And on the below surface, you can see a small organ which is called the gallbladder. The gallbladder, is, as I have said, told you before, it is present on the visceral surface. So if we turn it around and look behind the liver, we can see the gallbladder. The gallbladder is approximately 7 to 10 centimeters long, 3 centimeters broad. And I have explained before, it is present between the quadrant lobe in the right lobe of the liver. Now discussing the parts of the gallbladder. The gallbladder is divided into the fundus, the body, and the narrow area, the third part, the neck, which becomes continuous with the cystic duct, which drains the gallbladder. The fundus, which is the rounded end, it is surrounded by the peritoneum. Anterior to the fundus is the abdominal wall, whereas posterior to it is the transverse colon. The body is divided at the peritoneum, but anteriorly, as you can see, the liver is present and posteriorly is the first part of the duodenum. The neck, which is narrow and it becomes continuous with the cystic duct. This neck is attached to the liver by areolar tissue. Now we will discuss the blood supply. It is supplied by the cystic artery. The cystic artery, it is a continuation of the right hepatic artery. The right hepatic becomes the cystic when it goes behind the common hepatic and the cystic duct to reach the upper end of the gallbladder. This cystic artery supplies the gallbladder, the cystic duct, as well as the hepatic duct and the upper part of the common bile duct. This area is surgically very, very important. This area is known as the Kellett's triangle. Now it is surgically important because when we need to do resection of the, uh, of the gallbladder, which is called cholecystectomy, we need to be mindful of this area as it contains cystic artery, cystic lymph nodes, and atomic nerve fibers which are given to the gallbladder. If we need, we need to be mindful of the relation. Inferiorly is the cystic duct. Medially is the common hepatic duct. Whereas and the superior border, as you can see, is the cystic artery. This is a simplified form. This area has um, this area is not the inferior. This is the inferior border of the liver, but superior superior border should be occupied by the cystic artery. Now we will discuss the venous drainage. The superior surface of the gallbladder is drained through the veins, which are given out from the fossa. The rest of the gallbladder is drained by two cystic veins, which enters the portal vein. Now looking towards the nerve supply, the gallbladder is supplied by the cystic plexus. Basically, these nerve supply is provided to the cystic artery. This plexus is derived from the hepatic plexus, which receives its fibers from the celiac plexus. The celiac plexus is from by the left and right big eye along with the right phrenic nerve. The gallbladder also receives fibers from the sympathetic plexus from T7 to T9. It, these fibers are given to the sphincter whereas the parasympathetic fiber is given to the musculature of the gallbladder and the bile duct. If you know such a thing that this organ, whenever it becomes painful or inflamed, we use a term cholecystitis for it. it. The pain is basically referred to different parts of the body. In cholecystitis, there is referred pain to the epigastrium because of the supply of the vagus nerve to this respected area, to the inferior angle of the scapula because T7 segment is supplied 
to this area and as well as the right shoulder because C4 fibers is given to the phrenic nerve which also supplies this area. There is an also an important sign which we perform when the gallbladder is inflamed. It is called the Murphy sign. We place fingers below the costal margin at the tip of the ninth costal cartilage. When press firmly and tell the patient to exhale, the inflamed gallbladder touches the anterior abdominal wall, causing the patient to stop breathing, which is also called a catch in the breath. This is known as the Murphy sign. And it is an importance to identify acute cholecystitis, which I've also explained this is inflammation or acute inflammation of the gallbladder. Moving on to the function of the gallbladder. The gallbladder basically contracts when there is food which is rich in fat. The contraction is because of the hormone cholecystic kinin, which is from, from the duodenal cells, which causes dilation of the sphincter. It is an also an area for storage of bile and release of bile into the duodenum upon ingestion of the fatty food. And it also causes absorption of water and concentration of bile. Similarly, this organ is because when this organ is properly not functioning, there is formation of gallstones. Now we will move towards some of the fun facts. Fun facts are typhoid fever. As you know, typhoid fever is basically upon ingestion of the typhoid bacilli, which causes basically diarrhea, step ladder fever. But an important thing is that it affects three organs three areas of the body, the lymph nodes, the bone marrow, and the gallbladder. If the patient is supposed to be a carrier, this, um, this typhoid bacilli would persist in, the, in this organ. Moving on, another important thing is a Crowizer's law. Crowizer's law states dilation of the gallbladder can only occur when there is an extrinsic obstruction of the bile duct. It can occur in two ways. Either there is a malignancy, Malignancy can occur basically in the head of the pancreas, whereas uh, there can also be obstruction of the common bile duct. How can we differentiate this? The patient would come to us with a jaundiced face, but if the patient is also losing weight, then we can uh, we can rule out to it to be a carcinoma. Whereas if the patient is simply just yellow and the gallbladder is dilated then we can assume that it is an obstruction of the common bile duct. 